Hello, going live again. Um, talking today about, um, or just basically covering more about the psychology and tactics of the satanic stalker organized criminal um, trafficking network. Um, I'm using that guy's videos again. Um, I've linked below uh, the video that I'm playing today, and you guys should check out his channel. He's got really good information. Um, the reason that I use his videos is because there's, it's like I've covered it all myself, but it's nice to have another voice who get, who's like witnessed it and been a victim of it and sees it. So here we go. I'm going to go into it again. Um, let's see. All right. So she will then go on to discuss how witches use rituals and spells to work magic and to gain the things they want. Okay. So I want you guys to understand how desperate and hopeless these people are. For them to have to turn to magic to get what they want. Any normal person who is raising a child, for example, will tell them, in order to bring about the changes they want, they will have to work hard for these things. If they want to do better in school, they will have to read more and study harder. If they want to do better in sports or lose weight or gain muscle, then they will have to work harder on physical training, exercise, and diet better. If they want to go out with a certain girl, they may begin to do nice things for the person that they like. They may give that person little gifts, bring them flowers, remember them on their birthdays, write them letters or poems, walk them home from school, and just try to get to know them more personally. And above all else, work to become their friend. Now, only a broken individual will try to obtain all these things by doing a magical spell mm -hmm. and trying to conduct some sort of mind control on someone to force them to do what they want. Only people who are talentless, weak, and stupid will have to turn to magic to influence things to happen. So they will have to become slaves to a foreign power and ask for everything to be done for them. So you can imagine a bug-eyed retard, too lazy and too much of a wimp to affect change on his or her own. If he or she wants a person to like them, they are not going to try to win them over or work to become their friend. But instead they will go to their coven of local freaks do some weird satanic ritual mm -hmm. that ask for their target be placed under mind control yep. that will force the person against their will to do something they don't want to do. Yes. And that is what witchcraft is all about. A bunch of powerless, broken people using alien technology against the rest of you. So it's very scary that these are the people that run all the world's religions, militaries, and corporations. All of these people want to dominate every aspect of society, science, literature, art, film, business, trade, etc. And naturally, the cult cannot use this alien power to become genius in these fields. They can only use this power to control or destroy those who worked hard to prosper in those fields. So once the Vatican and the U.S. military has taken over these fields, mm -hmm. you will see that soon everything begins to fail yep. because they were never the best to rise within these fields to begin with. They only wish to dominate them. So after they take control, everything begins to go downhill. Everything begins to fail. And that is the plan of the demons. The demons... I have witnessed in three different places that I lived it only takes them two to four months to take over an entire area completely to the point that it's like a zombie land. It's insane. All right. I'm going to keep going. Um, here we go. We'll give a bunch of useless and stupid weaklings superior power over the rest of humanity. And the plan is that these degenerates will slowly destroy the rest of humanity. Yeah. And that is what is happening today. And for more details about this, see the video series on this channel called Alien Agenda.
So like the snake in the Garden of Eden, the cult will try to divide everyone and then snake itself between all the true people of the world who excelled in one thing or another. Yeah. And then they will use this alien power to drive all the real people apart and take over their lives, their businesses, and their area or field. And this is how the cult stays in power, by separating those of you who would want to work together for the betterment of society. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is what drives the coven is their hatred for the rest of you. And part of that is because they are afraid of the rest of you. And the only thing that gives them strength is to be in control of you. And the only reason they want to be in control is so they can manipulate, torture, and break the rest of you. And then you can become like them. So if two people are in love, for example, or they're very strong at something, and someone in the cult sees this, they will hate them and be jealous of them. And then they will go to the coven and ask for the use of the technology concerning radio frequency mind control to be used against the couple to manipulate them, break them up, and then torture and kill them in a witchcraft ritual. This is the whole point of the That's cult. And this is their favorite pastime. This is what they do for fun. They will use this ritual process to take out anyone they need to as they consume every aspect of human society. Mm -hmm. They will break up marriages. They will turn wives against husbands and husbands against wives. They will turn brothers and sisters and best friends against each other. They will destroy all healthy competition and business, science, art, yep. film, writing. They will steal all the real people's ideas their books, music, inventions, productions, and then they pass it off as their own to the masses. So for example, let's say a farming community in a rural part of America has been thriving by real people working together. Then the coven moves in and conducts mind control spell on these people using radio frequency technology. Yeah. Then they pick out the strongest people of the community that they will torture and kill first. A sheriff, Yay, a preacher, somebody who uh, <laughs> hires a lot of people because they have a business there or a farm there. Then after they're gone, the witches will then force a lot of people out who will lose their jobs or have financial problems. And when they are gone, the coven will kill more and more people, mm -hmm. taking over their houses, their farms, their livestock and business. Everything. And slowly everything that you and your people worked hard to build has been stolen by the U.S. military Vatican Crime Network. And this has happened to every great country on earth and has now happened in America. The U.S. military is attacking the American public with the Vatican cult, guiding them all to do it. Yeah. And this is the practice of their pagan religion, Wicca, which unites them and gives them reason to do it. Okay, I bet he goes into another video. Okay, well, I'll do a different live for that one. Okay, so yeah, so he basically covers how they come in and take over an area. I've I've seen them do this everywhere that I've lived. Um, some places it's been way more noticeable than others. When I moved to Maine, it was like 500 people in that town. And all of a sudden, um, the women, there, there was a little grocery store there. And um, the, the town was so tiny that I moved to. It was a post office, a tiny grocery store, and um, like a propane shop and a town hall post office. That was it. And a bank. And it was like at the end of like a cul-de-sac. And, um, and all of a sudden, like, I get there. And then within two months, the, the women at the store are like, who are all of these people? And I'm like, well, you know, and I kind of told them about how gang stalking, you know, worked. And um, they they moved these people in all over the place. Um, I overheard neighbors that were there for a long time that didn't know what was going on. They're like, who are all these people from New York? Um, apparently, they were bringing them over from New York and then um, southern Maine because I was like in like northern Maine. And um, brought in a whole bunch of drug addicts. These people were, like, disgusting. Um, but the entire place, like, the population doubled. Then I find out after um, 
I was only there. I got there Easter weekend, and I was out by the end of September. Um, I found out later that they tripled the property taxes because the property taxes were only supposed to be $500 a year, which is super cheap. Um, then I went on, on their YouTube uh, someone had a YouTube video of the house up there and said, don't move here. It's like Nazi Germany now. I was like, what? Um, I'll, I'll post it. I'll, I'll find the video and I'll post the comment. Um, their, I guess their property taxes tripled. And what their plan was, um, as soon as I got there, I had planned on going back to work and setting the business up again. Well, they had already had everything taken over, so I couldn't do it. Um, they had me cornered up there. They were running the rituals, blah, blah, blah. You guys already know. Um, so then, um, they, oh, I just lost my mind. Oh, so their plan was to try to screw me over and make it so I couldn't sell my house in time and then steal my house with the property taxes. Like, make it so I couldn't pay, the, like, the property taxes and then put a lien on my house and then steal it from me. <laughs> like, so they kept trying to get me to stay there past October. And I was trying to sell my house, like, immediately. You know, like, I was there, like, a month and a half, and I was like, oh, shit, I got to move out. I have to leave. So a house I just bought, I had to put back on the market and sell um, because I wasn't safe up there. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And, um, I was threatened by, uh, I had an aunt that had came up and because I didn't go back to Chicago with them and I didn't go to a mental hospital cause I don't need a mental hospital. I need actual fucking law enforcement that like does their job. Um, you know, or, or, so, you know, something. And, uh, so she told me that my, my mental illness was only going to get worse. And then all of a sudden, um, everything was taken over on my devices by uh, Cumberland, Georgia, which is what it was in, when I was in Chicago. Um, it's a trafficking network. And uh, so, yeah. My, and then that was when, like, majority of, like, the really crazy things started to happen. I made my first video. And, you know, but they had everything taken over all my communications. They were filtering every phone, every email, everything that I had. Um, I only had, um, human traffickers and people from the cult calling me about my house. And then they were like low balling me. Like, I'll give you a thousand dollars for your house. And I'm like, what? Then I did have a couple of people that I, I could tell because these people are like these like, rickety looking drug addicts and shit. I mean, these are not like, like the upper echelons of the cult. Cause I've dealt with them before and they don't do things like this, but, um, the, the like rickety drug addicts and shit. <sighs> Turns out that, um, every single time that I went to my house to show my house to somebody, it was a trafficking scheme. So nobody actually wanted to buy my house. They were coming to see if they wanted to, you know, traffic me. <laughs> like, then there was um, a scheme to try to get me into a car because um, it was like a half a mile away from where I was staying in my house and um, up there in need of repairs. So I was renting another place. And uh, so then I get there. Um, they were trying to get me in a car really hard. Like, they were like, come on, get in the car. We'll go to the bank and I'll get the money. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. You know, I'll wait here. And I recorded some of those um, those sessions when they were in my house looking. And um, I caught them, like, taking pictures of me and stuff. It was, like, really weird, pretending to be taking photos of the house. But they were, like, I caught them snapping pictures of me. Um, the whole thing was, like, crazy. So... Um, but in every place that I lived, they had completely taken over the entire um, thing. And what they do is they set up like an entire security system. It's like a dome of like drones above the place. People don't know. They think they're stars. Um, they have drones flying above. They think they're more secure. But it's actually like they're like trapped in there. Um, they started evicting in Chicago. They evicted all kinds of people out of the trailer park, moved all kinds of like 
trashy people in. Um, in Maine, they brought in all the rickety drug addicts. And then when I moved to Huntsville, it was a 21 apartment complex. And they moved in like all of these like crazy looking drug dealers and it was horrible. Then the Mormons showed up and turns out that they had um, apartments set up in there like Airbnbs. And then they would have gang stalker teams come in for like four to six weeks and then train on the gang stalking shit. Then they would like get out and um, then they would leave and I couldn't figure out why all these out of state people were here. It was an apartment complex. It wasn't a hotel. How are they only staying for six weeks? I'm like, who owns those apartments? Like, or who's renting them? Turns out it was military contractors renting the apartments. And then, <laughs> and um, people from like the, uh, the, net, the human experimentation network. And they had the apartments in their name. Cause you know, I looked everybody up. In that entire place, anything weird, I, w I was like writing their apartment number down, looking up them up on truepeopledsearch.com, looking up where they lived before, found common people that had like common apartments years ago that were also sketchy. So then um, turns out that everybody called me crazy, of course, because you know I'm the craziest bitch on earth. And um, everyone was calling me crazy. Turns out that I was right. I was told that um, after they had everything set up that they were going to move in single mothers on Section 8. They wanted to turn the entire complex Section 8 and use it for student housing for Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and they ended up doing that. And I had posted about it a, a year prior. Um, the U.S. Army, apparently Redstone Arsenal, was hooked up on our router from April to June saw what was going on with me and how bad they were torturing and beating me and doing all kinds of sick shit to me. I mean, I, I was almost dead most days there. It was terrifying. Um, and uh, what do you call it? They, um, sorry, I'm reliving. <laughs> it's not good. Um, so uh, Redstone Arsenal pulled themselves off of our, uh, off of our home router and whoever was running it out of there and they pulled the endorsement of the building and it, they used to endorse the um the complex it was a beautiful complex with the pool and tennis court and everything and um for employees of the of the army and they would recommend it for their families and it, it was when i moved there it was great it was like a family building and then, you know, within three months, the whole place was degenerated. Now, now you look up their reviews on the apartment. It's all one star. New management sucks. It's like, it's like a boys in the hood movie. Um, there's gang bangers everywhere. It's smoking. Everyone's smoking weed. It's disgusting. Um, so you can see in real time. When the gang stalker showed up is when the, the regular tenants started, you know, after about nine months of it, they started to complain because everything degenerated. So what they're doing is they're targeting someone like me, but using me to get the funding from DHS, you know, Homeland Security and that, get the drone set up, get everything there, and I'm the scapegoat. They're running everything for this crime thing through my computer, and it looks like I'm the one under some kind of a, a you know, a domestic terrorist list or something when I'm not. I can't use anything of mine. I mean, I use it, but it's not like I can't work. I can't do anything professional. So then what they do is they run everything through my computer, and then they use me for all kinds of sick shit that I don't remember. And then... Um, and then basically that's how they get their funding. And then when I leave from here again, anywhere and happen, you know, anywhere I go. So when I move again, they're going to do the same thing again because they're lying about me. Um, it would be virtually impossible for a woman who has no computer or I have a computer, but I have, um, 
no reliable email. Um, I don't have a telephone number. Um, nobody can contact me. I've been talking about this for two and a half years now, straight, with tons of evidence. Do you really think that I'm like a criminal? No, I don't think so. I'm a scapegoat for all this shit. So, um, but I'm going to keep doing it. So, anyway, um, I'm going to go. So, thank you for coming on again. I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.